Hello everyone, I'm Saki, and I am a technical officer at the World Health Organization. Today, on behalf of the WHO Cancer Team, I would like to talk about the Global Cancer Initiatives and the important role of nursing in these programs. Before I begin, I am employed by the WHO, and other than that, I do not have any other conflicts of interest to declare. As many of you know, WHO has three signature initiatives, namely cervical, childhood, breast cancer initiatives. These are not a standalone initiative. It is designed to support capacity building through health system strengthening approach, which would affect not only the cancer, but also the broader health system. I would like to explain a bit further about each initiative. Cervical cancer is a major public health problem, as you can see on these maps showing age standardized incidence and mortality rates per 100,000 people. Almost all countries with darker shade, which indicates a heavier burden from higher incidence and mortality, are low and middle income countries. People living with HIV are six times more likely to develop cervical cancer. Few diseases reflect global inequalities as much as cervical cancer does. In 2020, there were an estimated 341,000 women died of cervical cancer, nearly 90% of which occurred in low- and middle-income countries. The global strategy to eliminate cervical cancer was launched in 2020 with the ambitious but feasible, tar feasible targets. It requires 90% of girls fully vaccinated with HPV vaccine, 70% of women screened at least once in a lifetime, and 90% of women diagnosed with cervical cancer receiving treatment and care. To eliminate cervical cancer, all countries must retain and maintain an instance rate of below 4 per 100,000 women. Achieving this goal requires a radical change in the status quo, and for each country to maintain the 1970-90 targets by 2030. Vaccination alone will not achieve this goal until closer to 2120. With an intense approach of vaccination and screening, Elimination of cervical cancer globally is possible before 2100. While these two approaches will significantly reduce the disease burden, there are women who will be diagnosed with cervical cancer and require advanced treatment and care. From health promotion, education, vaccination, screening, treatment including palliative care to survivorship care, nurses play a vital role in the initiative in achieving the elimination goal. The second initiative focuses on childhood cancer. While many countries lack reliable data to capture the true picture of childhood cancer, there are an estimated 400,000 children and adolescents aged 0 to 19 years who are diagnosed with cancer each year. The distinctive characteristic of childhood cancer is that they generally cannot be prevented or identified through screening, and yet they remain highly curable. A shocking figure is that more than 80% of children with cancer will survive in high-income countries, while less than 30% of them will in low- and middle-income countries. This large gap in the survival is explained by inaccessibility to treatment services, low quality of care, lack of capacity to diagnose and delays in care. These in inaccessible childhood cancer services combined lead to more than 100,000 avoidable deaths in children and adolescents. In 2018, WHO, together with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and partners, launched the Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer. Achieving at least 60% survival for all children with cancer and reducing suffering globally by 2030 represents an approximate doubling of the current cure rate, saving an additional 1 million lives in this decade. Through the cure framework, networks and communities of practice can mobilize stakeholders and funding to achieve this goal. One of the pillars 
of the QO framework is the centers of excellence and care networks to increase access to quality health services. Because the continuum of care for children with care requires complex combination of interventions delivered at different levels of service in a coordinated care system, including the capacities in service provision at all levels of care ensures timely diagnosis, appropriate multidisciplinary care, and the ability to link to care closer to home for shared care and to facilitate adherence to treatment. Nurses play a key role here too, as they lead special program programs for workforce capacity building. The Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer began with six focus countries, which is expected to expand to more than 80 countries by 2025. The operational approach of the QO framework is to use both focus countries where strong political will exist for implementation and learning, as well as linked sub-regional networks. There is also increase in efforts with the support of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital focused on regional networks with planned childhood cancer medicine facility, which aims to address global and national barriers to accessing cancer therapies. We are pleased to announce today that the QO framework document is now available on WHO website. The third initiative focuses on breast cancer, which is by far the most common cancer and leading cause of cancer death among women worldwide. There were nearly 2.2 million women who were newly diagnosed with breast cancer in 2020. By 2040, this number is expected to increase to 3 million, 60% of which will occur in low- and middle-income countries. The likelihood of surviving for at least five years after the breast cancer diagnosis is over 90% in high-income countries, while it remains only half of it in low- and middle-income countries. The country you are born or diagnosed with cancer should not be the determining factor in prognosis. The Global Breast Cancer Initiative was newly introduced in March this year. It aims to reduce the global breast cancer mortality by 2.5% per year, which will avert 2.5 million breast cancer deaths globally by 2040. The initiative has three pillars. Health promotion for early detection, timely diagnosis, and comprehensive breast cancer management. Since its introduction, working groups have been set up and the technical consultation has been held. In these working groups, we have nurses together with other health professionals, experts from different fields, and patient advocates who are involved in the development of the technical package. Similar to the Childhood Cancer Initiative, the focus country and sub-regional network approach will be used for the implementation, incorporating analysis, planning, service provision, and monitoring at the country level. Community of practice, regional and global networking, collaboration, and reporting of key progress indicators will allow both approaches to demonstrate progress. In summary, cancer is emerging as global health priority. There are strong political commitments that have put non-communicable diseases, including cancer, onto the global health agenda. While WHO's global cancer initiatives focus on three cancer areas, they also serve as integrated models to create opportunities for learning and scaling up not only for the selected cancers, but also the broader health systems to tackle other diseases. Through the success and expansion of these initiatives, cancer control can advance globally. Nurses play a vital role in all the initiatives as we bring a unique perspective to the table. The work has just begun. Let's keep doing what we can, and let's keep making changes where we can. In closing, we would like to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to share this update with you today, and a very special thank you to all the nurses and healthcare professionals for the work you do. Thank you.